Hey folks, welcome back. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond, Nine Don Professional for our penultimate, I want to use that word for our, our penultimate uh, in our 60 game series, uh, AlphaGo versus the world. This is of course game 59. Um, uh, Stephen just told us an interesting story about this player. Do you want to share that with folks? The player is Joe De Young, uh, one of the top Chinese players. Hmm. He's fairly young, like he's still in his 20s at the time of this game. He was born in 1991. Um, and he is a world champion in 2013. Um, and he's got a nickname called Alpha Yang. So that's the last symbol of his name um, combined with Alpha. So uh -huh. I think it means that he has a good understanding of uh, some of the Alpha Go moves. Uh, well, we shall see, what shall, what, won't we? <laughs> Well, in any case, that's that's after this series, I'm pretty sure. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's about him now. Gotcha. So to get into the game, um, Black plays two, three, four points, and that's Master. So you can see Master is playing various openings here, and a big Sumari, and Black pincers. And this is a point where I'm going to have to research this fairly deeply. Um, I've marked three potential candidate moves, some might say. B is the move that I like to play, as you know. Mm -hmm. And A is the move that is pretty often, um, why don't I put it on board? This move is fairly often um, suggested by computer programs. And after Black answers that, um, it, it becomes very hard to understand what's going to happen. Because White's probably going to start a fight in that area of the board where Black has an advantage. Otherwise, White's going to play some kind of an attachment against this corner enclosure in the upper, upper right. And in either case, um, I'm going to have to figure out how, how to express that in a way that's understandable. So I, I'm going to spend some time on that in the book, I think. Good. It's, it's going to be, um, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it relatively understandable. Otherwise, there's this, um, this pressing move, which People didn't used to play against that high one space pincer. And Black will probably counter that with pushing through and cutting. This is one of the Joseki variations that is fairly popular among younger players who have done a lot of research with it. And so it gets really exciting, a lot of uh, neat variations. But uh, again, this is going to be something that's going to be pretty challenging to understand. So I'll try to get a. Um, an, a variation that's relatively understandable for that in the book too, um, but it's it's something that you will probably see in some top top young players uh, playing something like this, this 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 pressing move, and almost always black will counter with the pushing through and cutting. This is one of the variations um, where you see white pressing at one, where just about wherever black plays a pincer, but when that does happen, this pincer is in a rel relatively effective point. So like it, it's better for black than if the pincer was one space further away at age 16 or like any of these places, um, any of these places would not be as effective as the, the game pincer. So black has some uh, possibility, a lot of potential to, to, for this to work for black. But even so, you will see computer programs and young, young top professionals playing this move. So it'll be interesting. Um, I'll try to I'll try to find some variations that are relatively easy to understand. Thank so you. in the game, uh, White played away, and this is a strategy that is fairly common uh, for some professionals, just giving the upper side to Black and taking taking space on the lower side. And this is given a slight downgrade from the computer programs, like it's supposed to be slightly better for Black. It's, it's not really a very big uh, change in the point value. And uh, the other option would be to extend here and start this wild fight on the upper side. So this is also something that um, would be very, it's probably playable for white, but um, it would be something new and different. So it would be sort of scary for the player involved. Looks scary to me. Yeah. And it's an area that um, black does dominate for the time being, so it would mm -hmm. be it would be a bit scary. So it's very natural for white to do that for a human player, 
but it does give black a slight advantage in the score. But this is where the score actually started to change a bit. Um, there's this move where white was supposed to start with the peep and something like this. It, it turns out that the invasion at the third line here at white three is probably slightly better because, because of the potential connection underneath here. So this variation was looking a bit better for white. In the game, white started with the capping move and already this is okay for black. Um, at this point in the game, uh, it's still it's still pretty close. But this was a turning point where white played the peep now, and it was not forcing. So maybe white should have just protected this side and eventually played with the nobi. This kind of variation, it looks closer to an even game. Um, I do want to call attention to the final move there at five, at M17. That is a kind of a shape move where white is looking to attach at P17 next, that uh, I've marked it with A. Mm -hmm. So that, that combination there with the other option being playing at J17 to get a base on the side um, is something that white can look to play against the large knight's um, corner enclosure. And since master did, AlphaGo did play a lot of large knight's corner enclosures, I was seeing this move being suggested a lot um, by, for instance, Lila Zero. So it's a move that um, is worth remembering. So basically this variation was because I wanted to show you that move. Okay, cool. And the game black counters with this and white cuts. And actually this move, uh, with this move, Lila zero and um, Kadawo thinks, they both think that black's winning percentage went down a little bit, but it was uh. already at 60%. So it's not a big deal for AlphaGo. Um, and it's, it's hard for me to really say the, the suggested move with this move, which is maybe a bit better. And in this case, black will be able to capture these two stones. So that's the difference there. Like if white plays here, black can extend here and nothing is, it's not really working for white. So the difference is that in the game, white did have that opportunity to capture this black stone. Black extends, but white has the forcing move here. So black, so if black um, saves those two stones, white will be able to capture these two. So that's the idea here. Um, so this is working for white, but I, I don't really see this as a great success for white when black curls around here and squeezes. This still looks playable for black. In fact, at this point of the game, um, it's one more move and black's gonna be 66%. So it was white's next move which is a very reasonable looking move. This move, white is just trying to make some eyes in the corner. Uh, but it turns out <coughs> when black plays here, black still has the threat of playing at B19 here to kill white. So white just, needs one more I'm, move. I'm just looking at it. It's a great life and death problem. It's very difficult. Well, um, actually if black plays first here, it's gonna be relatively easy. Um, right, 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 right. Um, and and black to... did need that move at C14 that black has just played in order to, to fix the weaknesses on the outside. In fact, this is such a thick move, it's such a strong shape that black gets here with everything connected, is that at this point the game is 66% for black. And that translates to 13 points before Komi, according to Katago. And so white actually. Um, Karago will say, actually Lila also will say that, um, I'm talking about Lila zero that is, that yeah. white had to play here uh, and cut black. And the reason that a human player will have trouble finding this is that white is still not alive. No, no. And black can just play here. Um, even if black plays an Atari here, black would have to go back to protect and it wouldn't really be good shape. So it's probably better for black just to pull back. But white does have moves like B would be troublesome or an attachment at A, uh, for instance, if black tries to kill the corner um, or even if black plays away. Stuff like this could happen, could be very troublesome on the outside or if white just simply, um, if, if white just simply plays, let's see, where are we? Or if white just simply um, plays, 
plays this move, this would be another way that white could make a li living shape on the side, just, so, just because black cannot really save everything at this point. So white does have those possibilities, um, but black's going to, black is not going to try to kill the whole group. So this is a point where white would be sort of hanging there and it would, it would be a very dangerous situation because um, black would, uh, just to go back a few moves, um, black, would, black would not try to kill white, but would start doing something in the center of the board, maybe starting with something like this. And white would eventually have to add one more move to the group on the upper side. Um, as soon as black gets some kind of reinforcement in, with a stone somewhere around here, white's gonna have to add one more move to that group. So it is sort of scary for white, but uh, the computer analysis gives this a much better score. And I think the whole idea is that white had to find some way to put some pressure on this black group. And in the fight that continues, white will have to continue to try to put pressure on that black group and get some counterplay by doing so. Because in the game, uh, just connecting up here with all of these black stones now they're very strong. They're all completely connected. It made the, the rest of the game very easy for Black to play. That, that's, uh, that's my inter interpretation of the 66% that I was given. And so now Black just, since Black is completely connected, Black just starts taking territory. And it's again, the pattern you see where Black had this huge moyo, White erased it, White erased it from the corner. So that was, um, it was like a, that corner was a, an area that looked like it was going to be a 20 point black territory. Locally, that's a great success for white to uh, scoop that out. And so it's a, a difference of something like 20 points, 25 points when you compare it to that area being a black territory. But the result is a huge leap for black. So what's happening here is that white has this weak group on the outside. Black is getting some territory back on the side. And the moves where white was supposedly gaining territory while allowing black to get that moyo, uh, since they're star points, they're not territory after all. And so black is gonna take away all that territory now. So starting with the lower left corner, um, like it was suggested that this is not gonna be good for white, but maybe better than the game. I was really um, impressed by this move. This is where Al AlphaGo gets one of the rare cases where it looks really um, hyper aggressive, you might say, <laughs> is attacking very strongly here. I know. Um, but then after that, it just very quickly uh, finishes off the fight. It doesn't really do very much. Um, at this point, the game is very one-sided. Like Black has enough territory and also has a lot of potential on the right side of the board. And the winning percentage is somewhere around 70% at this point. I tell you, nobody, so I knows I'm to, stop here. nobody knows how to win a one game like AlphaGo, right? I mean, it's just yes. amazing. I mean, you know, I mean, even, even with the fact that, you know, it considers a one game one where it's a point ahead, but, mm -hmm. you know, to the extent that even, you know, it's obvious uh, that it's ahead. So amazing. Uh, and really uh, fascinating uh, in the upper left there where it really seemed like White was, like you said, White was doing great. And it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I was impressed by the way that the correct move, according to computer programs, was a move that intuitively made me very uncomfortable. Right, right. Um, but after an anal analyzing it, I, I sort of, Agreed, in that I, I I guess that White probably had to do something like that, right? In order agree, to keep in the but, game. But are you comfortable yeah. with it yet, or you disagree with it? I, well, I'm I'm just going to say that White had already made a mistake. It was a difficult game already. <laughs> yeah. Right. Great. Thank you, Michael. Thanks everybody for watching, and uh, see you next time for our final game in this series. Thanks for watching.